A meeting of you, the City Unified School Board District, the school board. Um, a number of you have asked, a number of you have asked to speak, and there are certain things that we have to advise you of before that happens. I'm going to have the clerk read it first. All right, notice to the public. Under the Brown Act, the board shall entertain comments on any item appearing on the posted closed session agenda. The board will respect the rights of the public to express their viewpoints on matters within the board's jurisdiction. However, comments that are defamatory or that violate the privacy rights of any individuals or individ or sorry, that are defamatory or that violate the privacy rights of any students or individuals may not be protected by law. The board shall not permit any disturbance or willful interruption of board meetings. Pursuant to California Civil Code 47, statements made at legislative proceedings which include school board meetings, constitute privileged publications. The publisher of the statement will be immune from litigation, generally speaking, for so long as the statement A is not made with malice and B has some connection or logical relation to the proceedings and is made in order to achieve the object of the proceeding. Okay, I asked the clerk to read that and, and just one other reminder, I wanna remind folks that these are statements made in a public meeting and that you're only protected when they are made in order to advance the matter being decided on tonight. Therefore, you should proceed with caution. I'm also asking that you may not agree with the people that are coming to the podium, but we will respect them. Everyone in here has a right to their voice. Anyone that becomes disrespectful or insightful, I will ask them to have a seat or to leave the room. I will maintain order here. We want to hear your comments. I assure you we want to hear everyone's comments. But we're not going to turn this into a circus and we are certainly not going to allow any person who wants to address this board to be disrespected. Also, we will have a three minute time limit. I ask that we have a number of you that want to speak. We want to hear as much, many of you as possible. I have extended um, we normally stop at 6 o'clock. We are going to extend it to 6.15 to give some additional time. But at 6.15, I will stop and we will adjourn to closed session. So we're, we're you know, trying to give an extra 15 minutes. Um, the timekeeper will remind you of when your time is up. And please, I ask that you not continue and that you take your seat. I don't want anyone to feel like we don't hear your voices because we do. But this is not a popularity contest, but it is also not a witch hunt. So please, be respectful to each other so that we can hear all of you. Thank you very much. Our first speaker is, and if I mess up your name, I'm sorry, Janae Morass. Good evening. My name is Janae Morass. I graduated from New City High School in 2012. I will have known Jim Whitaker for 10 years this coming August. Throughout the past 10 years, I have been lucky enough to know Mr. Whitaker in both a professional and personal setting. Mr. Whitaker has always been a strong advocate, not only for the community, but for his students as well. I have observed Mr. Whitaker on multiple occasions asking his struggling students how he can help them succeed. Um, whether he's buying them school supplies, a pair of shoes, or even accommodating their physical limitations so that they can pass PE. He's a giving man. For instance, while we were in Florida for cheer nationals, go Hoppers, <laughs> we were given two food vouchers for the week. It was the first night that we were there and we were all getting our dinner. My teammates and I sat down to eat. And Whitaker, Mr. Whitaker came up to us a couple minutes later and handed us all back our vouchers and said, save these for another meal. I've got you covered. This may not seem like a big act to you guys, but for a high school kid with no money of their own, that's huge. 
in total seven years to the day, being February 14th, that myself and 35 other cheerleaders and moms were involved in a bus crash on our way back to the airport from Cheer National. During that incident, Jim Whitaker was very instrumental in providing reassurance that we would all get back home safely to our families. After graduating and going off to college and then moving across the country, I have learned the definition of a true role model, what the definition of a true role model is, and that is Jim Whitaker. I just recently moved back to U.S. City from Atlanta, Georgia, where I was living with my fiance. Cross country moves are hard. After a long four days of driving, we finally arrived, and Jim and his wife Natalie were there eager to help us in any way they could. Mr. Whitaker has proven to me that why he went into teaching, and that was to help others. He has shown this to be true over the past 26 years of teaching. The love, laughter, time, and dedication he has put into teaching and the community not only sets a great example for everyone he crossed paths with, it makes me proud to be his friend. So I ask, you, I ask you board members to give Mr. Whitaker a chance to speak, as he rightfully deserves. He has given so much to this community and will continue to do so, as this is the place that is very close to his heart. We love you and we support you, Mr. Whitaker. Thank you. Thank you. Arlene Latna. Hello, I've known Jim since he was a little boy, all through Little League. Later on, through the years, I've known him personally and through Kiwanis and some other social functions, as well as personally. He hasn't had his day in court yet, but he's been convicted by the media. The Appeal Democrat and the dispatch have made sure that this man is really a Jack the Ripper. And I hope you will give him a chance to have his say and that he can be a good citizen. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Isabella Garcia Schmidt. From my personal experience with Mr. Jim Whitaker, um, it's not right to put an honest, hardworking man through these false accusations. He's inspired me to be he has inspired me to be the best I could ever be ever because I've known him. Girls in high school twist words, we all know that. We've all done that. But to this point, it's not right and it's not fair. These accusations of destroying the man's career, something he's worked so hard at, he's highly destructive and loved by many. Concerning the incident of Mr. Wicker being falsely accused of touching the young girl's buttons, imagine if he just stood there not doing anything and it was an actual fight. In high school, you have to assume it's always applied, and he did the right thing by using his knee. It saddens, it saddens me how our community loved him, but the second he's faced with all these false accusations, lies, and rumors they turn on him. This all disappoints me to be Jim Whitaker, I believe, in my heart, is innocent. And I ask you to give him a chance to do and give him his side. Thank you. Thank you. I have been praying for all the haters. I don't understand why people are so hateful and want to ruin an honest man's life and reputation, but makes up horrible false accusations. Plus, the incident happened with the 14-year-old girl on one day, and everything was fine with her. But two days later, Mr. Whitaker is born that he has to leave the school premises. Sounds pretty fishy to me. I've known Mr. Whitaker for many years, and he is nothing like these accusers are trying to make him out to be. He's a great teacher, husband, father, and friend. The accusations that happened in 1998, 2013, and 2014 that were mentioned at the previous board meeting were taken care of at the times they happened. The girl that said he injured her was already injured before that even happened. He did not cause that injury. The accusations were all lies, and the students and parents know that. At the end of the day, it is all about money at the tune of $500,000. Mr. Whitaker likes to fight for the rights of others, such as when someone wanted to have the school board recall during the teacher strike, he told that person that she, you don't recall the board. 
You just don't vote for them when they're up for re-election. He works with nonprofits to support disadvantaged kids, and he also pays for PE clothes out of his own pocket for students that can't afford them. Not many teachers do this. Mr. Whitaker used his knee after he thought two students were engaged in a fight. It was a reaction to seeing one girl kick another girl. After speaking to another teacher about the incident, Mr. Whitaker was the one that tried to get the student to go to the principal's office with him. He also self-reported it to an on-campus resource officer and an assistant principal. The principal was on the phone. Now, would a guilty man go to all these measures? I don't think so. Simply put, Mr. Whitaker made a mistake by reporting it and owned up to it, but he should not be terminated for doing what he thought was the right thing to do. This girl had been sent to the office 11 times since September. She also told two separate teachers to F off, and the parents were in the process of homeschooling this girl before this incident ever happened with Mr. Whitaker. Had he done nothing and were really, the girls were really fighting and the 14-year-old got hurt, I'm sure these same parents would be wanting him dismissed because he left their daughter get injured. The high school has not trained their teachers what to do if they come upon a fight. I don't know if that's the administration's fault or the school board. The woman's right issue is really getting out of hand and it has to come to a stop. Pretty soon no employer is going to hire a female because they're going to be worried about sexual harassment. A man can't even put a, a hand on a woman's shoulder for getting a sexual harassment. I hope you as a board do not dismiss Mr. Whitaker. This school needs a good, honest teacher like him. Don't fall for all these false accusations. Okay, part nine, this time's up. Please, thank you. Thank you. Shanika Cummings. My name is Jennifer Cummins. I'm a former student from New York City High School. And on May 8, 2013, I was physically assaulted by my PE teacher, Jim Whitaker. And the statement was read by another person at the last board meeting, but I wanted for you to put a face to the name. Mr. Whitaker grabbed the, my left wrist and the back of my neck and swung my arm backwards. I repeatedly told him to stop and begged him to let go of me. At the time, I was a wrestler, and he said to me, if I was your opponent, how would you get your wrist back? I continued to tell him to stop and to let me go, but he didn't let go of me until I struggled away from him. I felt obligated to continue with PA by walking a lap around the gym. During my walk, I felt a sharp pain in my shoulder, and I was crying, and I ran out of the gym, and I went to the girl's bed and called my dad. I told my dad about what happened, and he instructed me to go to the nurse's office and to call him from there. I told the nurse of what had happened, and she immediately called him Principal Ramirez and Vice Principal Eklund. I called my dad again, told him, Mr. Ramirez and Mr. Eklund, that Mr. Whitaker physically assaulted me in PE. I made a written statement on the incident, which was filed with the school district, and I also asked Officer Ortega, the campus resource officer, to file a police report, which he did. I went to the hospital with my dad, and we brought the school copies of my x-rays. I told Mr. Ramirez that I wanted to press charges, but he reassured me that a further investigation would be conducted. I have yet to receive the results of the supposed investigation. I also requested at the time to switch PE teachers for the remainder of the school year, but Mr. Ramirez told me that if I switched now, I would have to retake PE next year due to it being so late in the semester. In August of 2013, as a result of reliving my assault by continuing to have class with my attacker every school day for the remainder of the year, I was diagnosed with depression, anxiety, and PTSD. I was constantly medicated for two years and had to attend therapy regularly to subdue my symptoms and was ultimately hospitalized because of it. I also had a surgery on my shoulder which resulted in permanent scarring. During my senior year in 2015, I told Mr. Ramirez that I did not feel safe around Mr. Whitaker and requested to not have him chaperone my senior prom and graduation ceremony. I was told that there was nothing that could be done to prevent Mr. Whitaker from being at my senior prom and graduation. I was also told that I could make an appointment with the 
superintendent to see if she can help me. My dad and I met the superintendent of Reno SUNY, and I begged her to prevent Mr. Whitaker from participating in my senior prom and graduation, not only because I didn't feel safe around him, but because he was also a trigger from my depression, anxiety, and other PTSD symptoms. She told me that because he had the right to be there, the most she could do was make a request to Mr. Whitaker and ask him not to be a chaperone at these events. Because no one would, would, would comply with my request, I did not attend my own senior prom or my own graduation ceremony. I'm sorry, time's up, please. <laughs> Members of the board, thank you for the opportunity to share my speech. I'm speaking on behalf of current and former students who have reached out to me. They made a promise to them that their voices matter and they, that they would be afforded the chance to be heard by me. I like, would like to read you a list. 1993, Julie A. 1994 to 1995, Anonymous. 1997, Robin L. 1998 to 2001, Jennifer S. 1998, Andrea S. 2002, Eugene Q. 2003, Anonymous. 2012, Anonymous. 2013, Ch Shannon C. 2014, Santara F. 2014, Alyssa. 2014, Anonymous. 2018, Anonymous. All of the above have one thing in common. They have been victimized by a PE teacher currently under administrative leave using a number of varied intimidation tactics, which include, but are not limited to, bullying, verbal harassment, physical injury, retaliation, and sexual harassment, including literary advances and physical touching. When these were reported to teachers, administrators, the school district, or all of the above, the very adults entrusted to help them, these victims were either ignored, minimized, quieted, and or told they misunderstood the teacher's actions. Because of this teacher's long-standing position at the high school, as well as political, as well as his political involvement within the, within the community, it is clear that his actions have been swept under the carpet. Based on statements given to several news outlets, the teacher and his attorney have effectively shown they can and will shame others in an attempt to silence them by discounting or lessening their claims. Many parents and students fear retaliation and have been told the teacher is considered untouchable. Therefore, they've not taken action or or are too afraid to. Your personnel policy handbook states that you expect employee conduct to enhance the integrity of the district, to advance the goals of your educational programs, and contribute to a positive school climate. This teacher has been investigated for inappropriate conduct with the student. He clearly has not been held accountable for past misconduct, allowing him to return to teaching would contradict the goals of the district. When convening to discuss the recommendation by the governing board, please also review the Safe Place to Learn Act. Your own policies on positive school climate for students and personnel dismissal. While I am honored and humbled to speak on behalf of these victims, I am deeply saddened by the necessity. I hope that moving forward with termination of this teacher will send a strong message to victims that their claims are validated and that they'll no longer be silenced. I also hope it will instill an employee standard that's been lost for too many years. I ask YCUSD to do the right thing and follow the recommendations of this board for termination. I leave you with this. Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. Always remember the time is always right to do what is right, and that what is done in darkness will eventually come to light. Again, I am honored to be the voice of our daughters, our sons, our wives, our sisters, for all victims. Santessa? Um, That's Pantera. Oh, okay. I have horrible hand Pantera. Hello. So, um, roughly two weeks ago, Shannon's face is what my face looked like. I have put a lot of thought into what I was going to say. I wrote a huge speech, but I threw it away. Um, the lady who was saying Shannon's name, I didn't know that that's who it was. I was a sophomore in high school when she was in my class, and I remember her having a broken arm. But other than that, the night that I was here speaking, right here, uh, the next morning I woke up to students, teachers, parents, messaging me. I had 57 Facebook messages and 23 Instagram messages. Oh, he did this to me. Thank you for being my voice. Oh, my daughter, she's homeschooled for the rest of her life. My son this. It's not just girls, it's boys too. 
And I personally would love to see Mr. Whitaker sit right there and tell me I'm lying. I'd love him to see Shannon go, say she's lying. Any woman that's going to speak tonight, I'd love him to say anything. And anyone that has anything great to say about him, he's your friend. He's not going to do that to you. We're strangers to him. He's going to do it to us. I was roughly, I was turning 14 that year. I was 13 years old when it happened. Like, that's disgusting. I don't even know what to say besides the fact that even if there was 20 people speaking here tonight, if 19 of them were lying, it still happened to one person. And that one person should be enough. If it happened to my daughter, my niece, my cousin, my nephew, my grandpa's neighbor, anybody, I don't care. If he should be terminated, let go, put on whatever kind of list he has to be put on, I don't think he should be able to, like I work at Sam's Club. He comes to Sam's Club all the time. You know how uncomfortable that makes me feel? Comes to my life. I just go to the bathroom. Come right back and get it done. But that's not my fault. I shouldn't have to be uncomfortable in my own workplace. Same at Winko all the time. Just go the other way. When he lives in the same town, it's gonna happen. But when you shouldn't when you can't go to your own prom because a teacher has to be there, a teacher is a teacher. He shouldn't have to be forced to go to a prom. There's many of other teachers that can fulfill this place. that have been brought forward by said staff member, I felt that it was only my duty as a parent to come here and help defend the people that are accusing this person of these things. I'm also here to show support to victims of sexual assault and let them know that their community supports them despite those that agree with what they're saying. I feel, this, I feel to provide this kind of support is important, especially at these crucial ages where a lot of these kids don't feel like they have anybody to turn to. And to hear that some of these students have had these allegations somewhat brushed off is very disturbing as a parent and not something that I felt happened at Youth City Unified. I want to say that I feel disappointed in hearing that when we start this meeting out, we have to be advised that we should stay civil and the fact that here is because there is a teacher accused of so many awful things. I want to point out that many girls by the age of 11 have already experienced some type of sexual harassment. As I said, my daughter is 10. That means that any day it's going to be her. In our home, we're choosing to raise our children to keep their hands to themselves. And when you want to touch someone else, it has to be with their permission. I heard another speaker say that it's going to get to the point where we're not going to be able to hire women for jobs. And I think that that's comical. If you would like to touch someone else, you need to ask, and that's it. We teach that to our boys, we teach that to our daughter. Someone touches you and it's unwanted, you need to speak up. How on earth are these girls going to speak up if they're going to be chastised for what they're saying? I would like all of the statements and reports and comments by these students to be considered, and I would like the board to pretend that this is happening to their own child, and there are many women sitting up here, and I'm sure that you have experienced some of these things as well. At 34 years old, I've experienced a handful of these things, and I'm just appalled that it continues to happen to our students. I feel that great consideration needs to be taken in removing the staff member, um, and I do not feel that he has the right to be around children. Sometimes people who are in a position of power, unfortunately, choose to abuse that power, and I feel that's evident today. How on earth are we here in 2018 discussing these matters? Um, with this teacher's uh, alleged misconduct. And just real quick, I wanted to point out that my 10-year-old daughter made this sign this afternoon. And she made it for me to bring today. It says, speaking up so my daughter doesn't have to say me too. Andrew Foster. Good evening. My 
My name is Andrea Foster, formerly Andrea Cook. My husband, Kate Foster, spoke on my behalf at the last meeting, board meeting, regarding two incidences I had with Mr. Whitaker 20 years ago. Two weeks ago, before the last board meeting, I was able to retrieve my report from 20 years ago from the district office. The report confirmed, once again, the exact details of the incident that I had described to my husband over the years. The past month has been pretty heavy for me and my family, as I never expected or at least bit desired that my happenings with Mr. Whitaker would ever resurface. But my hope in standing up here tonight is to somehow convey a message to young girls that you should never be afraid to stand up for what is right and that you do have the freedom to come forward if you feel like you've been mistreated or touched inappropriately. My desire is that we have schools filled with teachers who know healthy boundaries with their students, that no student should ever have to go to school feeling the least bit nervous about their teacher-student interaction. My number, my number one goal as a mom to three girls is for them to know their worth, to teach them that they are not a sexual object, but a person who deserves respect from their peers, as well as their leaders. As a mom to a son, as well, I hope to raise him to be a respectful young man with knowledge of what is appropriate and inappropriate behavior toward women. And if he ever crossed a line, I would hope that his actions would get corrected and given proper consequence. In the past five years, our culture has taken up a strong stance against bullying by peers in our schools. Shouldn't we take up the same stance against misconduct or inappropriate sexual behavior, especially if it is from a teacher to a student? In the past few weeks, I have connected with other girls, hearing their similar stories about Mr. Whitaker over the years. Many have been touched or handled inappropriately while being taught by him on campus. I remember when it happened to me 20 years ago, though I knew of others that had experienced something similar with him, I still felt intimidated and insecure to report because I was young and knew it was my work against his. I was approached by Mr. Whitaker at the gym about two years after the incident, which he has told others was an apology. He's told others that it was an apology. He may have said the words, I'm sorry, but he shamed me, blaming me for making him out to feel like a child molester and apologized only for misinterpreting his actions. I left shaking and crying that day. It did not feel like an apology at all. The bottom line and why we are all sitting here tonight is that too many girls have had to encounter inappropriate touch in the hands of a teacher. This cannot be tolerated in our schools or in our culture any longer. For too long, women have stayed silent with the belief that men will get away with it because that, that's just the way they are or because they have more or because they have more power. If you're a person here tonight who is defending a man who has been accused of touching women inappropriately, not once, not twice, but countless stories, I encourage you to ask yourself why you're okay with this behavior being tolerated in our schools to young students simply trying to get an education. I want to conclude by saying I am so proud of the young women who have the courage and have been bold in coming forward to tell your stories. It's because of you that I felt comfortable sharing mine. Thank you. Jenny. <laughs> we have two speakers coming up. They're going to share the three minutes. Is that correct, Heidi, Becky? Yes, yeah, right. we're making a victim statement by the mother and her daughter. I'd like to just make sure I declare this. Everyone here, there's a lot of people who know me. My husband is a teacher of high school, and I speak for me not for Mr. James, okay? So this is for Alyssa and Crystal Bailey. On October 1st, 2014, I was playing basketball at Yuba City High School. A student I did not inform, I did not know informed me that Mr. Ritter, my PE teacher, was videotaping me and my friend from the waist down. Okay, excuse me. The question legally is, do you have permission and do you have documentation that you have permission to, to read their statement? Yes, yeah, she yeah. has permission. Yeah. Okay, and I have are permission you? to read their statement. Okay, and you Thank are? Thank you, Crystal Baby. Okay. <laughs> so I hope we get a little added time to our meeting. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to start over. On October 1st, 2014, I was playing basketball and PE at the Yuba City High School. A student I did not know informed me that Mr. Jim Whitaker, my PE teacher, was videotaping me and my friend from the waist down with his cell phone. My friend and I then confronted him about it, and he said he was videotaping me because I wasn't participating. He then waved his cell phone around in the air and said, I have a video of you. When I went home that night, I told my mother. She told me that my teacher could not videotape me and to report it to the school. 
The next day, on October 2nd, I completed the student statement and handed it to Mr. Eklund. The following day, on October 3rd, when I went to my PE class, Mr. Whitaker told me in front of all of my classmates to do 25 push-ups. Nobody else was going to, was doing push-ups. I was embarrassed and upset and ran out of the class. I called my mother to let her know I had left the class. I was very upset and concerned about my daughter when she called me crying on October 3rd. I immediately called the office and asked to meet with Mr. Whitaker. Mr. Eklund, the assistant principal, scheduled the meeting for October 7th. At the very beginning of the meeting, before I had even had a chance to say anything to Mr. Whitaker, he told me that every teacher has that one student they butt heads with. I asked him if he videotaped my daughter, and he said yes. I was shocked that he not only recorded my daughter, but that he openly admitted to doing it. I then asked if I could see the video, and he told me that Mr. Eklund and the principal, Mr. Ramirez, told him to delete it. I told him, I was told that you videotaped her from her waist down. I don't know you. This is not only harassment, it's sexual harassment, and our conversation is over. Now Mr. Eklund and Mr. Ramirez come in here. Mr. Whitaker left. When they entered the room, I asked Mr. Eklund, Mr. Ramirez, are you aware that he videotaped my daughter? They both said it's under investigation. When I asked why they, why they had told Mr. Whitaker to delete the video, Mr. Eklund assured me they had not. I requested that Mr. Edipur, Mr. Whitaker return to the room because he had just told me differently. However, they instead just told me they were investigated. I then asked for the campus resource officer and they again refused and repeated it's under investigation. I informed them that my daughter had been subject to sexual harassment and they said that's a strong accusation. At this point, I realized they were not planning to help me and I left. I informed them that I would be filing my own police report. After my daughter's friend told her mom what had happened and how I'd been treated at the meeting, her mom called the police. We went to her home and filed a police report together. Officer Paletta with the Yuba City Police Department began to take our statements. When we told Officer Paletta the teacher's name, he paused and informed us that he would need to check with his supervisor before taking our statements. The statement, we the uh, report number is 14 026532. The next day, my friend. Sorry. The next day, my friend, my friend, and I went to PE class. When we walked in, Mr. Ritter told us. Time's up, please. Oh. Time's up. Okay. Is that what I'm <laughs> Was that with our added time? Yes. <laughs> I said yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cindy Storman. titled Abuse of Power, written by Alan McAvoy and published on tolerance.org. In part, it states, in order to address the phenomenon of teachers who bully students, the education profession needs to grapple with several inconvenient truths. In general, bullying by educators is rationalized by offenders, normalized by students, minimized or ignored by colleagues who remain silent, enabled by inaction of school systems and undetected by outsiders. I believe the current situation in this district encompasses all five of those inconvenient truths. I'm here again tonight to share my thoughts as a parent with this board. Please don't put this teacher back in a classroom. Please don't put this teacher back on any school campus in any capacity. The pattern of his behavior is very clear to me. What I see is an opportunistic predator, a predator who has used his position of power to grope, humiliate, intimidate, and cause emotional and sometimes physical harm to children for decades. I think sometimes he just lay in wait for a girl to be alone, isolated just enough for him to pounce and not be observed. Another time, he saw his chance when a girl was distraught about something else and used that moment to deceive her into believing he was going to console her before once again he pounced. When no opportunities like this were readily available, I think he created his own by using his authority as a teacher to force a girl to be vulnerable and alone with him. This pattern has continued for more than two decades. Sadly, this district, the board, and the authorities have failed these girls and women. 
Those who did speak out despite their fear and embarrassment were failed by the very system and process that should have protected them. Please don't fail them again. Do the right thing. Don't enable this or any bully or predator to prey on our children any longer. I think that there's a systemic problem in the district with regard to children's statements in, in many different forms, whether it's bullying or harassment or the most recent situation, it needs to be addressed. Some changes need to be made and all of our children have got to be put first. They have to be protected and if this board won't do it, who will? Thank you. We're going to continue, but I again want to remind you that we're ending this session at 615. So, I mean, it's not a new announcement, it's the same announcement. Can we bring up Mike Gaff Gaffhart? <laughs> I've known Jim for about four years now, uh, personally, and uh, he's known his mom and dad for 45 years. Um, one of the things I want to point out about Jim is that, that I'm impressed by him, is he's always thinking of community-wide. So right now, he's spending a great deal of time with um, the Sutter Performing Arts Association in terms of like, raising money to help with the conversion of the old Sutter Theater into a performing arts center. And uh, you know, Jim, he's a, he's a duck hunter. He's a, he doesn't go to concerts and dances and his favorite thing, but he understands that the community needs this. So he's thinking community always. And it was a couple of years ago he brought in a Hispanic girl who was an artist that he had seen at a uh, convention it was a very inspiring story. She had a very, very difficult early life, and she has learned to express herself through art. And so he had her come and speak. Unfortunately, about 50 people were there at best, but it included about Garamendi at the time. So here again, he's always thinking community. What can will help grow the community? And then uh, the Punjabi club on, on the campus was desperately looking for leadership and so he stepped in in that area and very much appreciated and like the one time vice president RG told me to lend his support then this expressed a, a general concern about what I can see from my perspective a few weeks or so ago is that we have Bias in journalism, and then we had large groups of people revving up and expressing their feelings, expressing their uh, side of the story. And Jim has been kind of left out of the, the process, and so it's like the, the, the bias in journalism and, and the group fervor has gotten ahead of the new process. So I'm here to ask you to all think in terms of the process, because we have our young ladies welfare on one side, and then we have the career breaking and destroying process on the other side. That's what's at stake here tonight. Thank you. Trish, <laughs> Hi, my name is Trish Lusage, and I'm here uh, to read a statement from the New City High Schools of the School Education Department. School board community members, thank you for letting us speak. We, the physical education teachers at New City High School, stand in complete support of Kim Whitaker over the January issue. The majority of us have worked with him for over 22 years, and we have never witnessed him treat any student any differently than we would have treated that student. Many times we have observed him giving his time, his money, and his help to support students. A few weeks ago, Jim Whitaker happened to be walking through the gym lobby and saw a girl kicking another girl lying on the floor. 
Mr. Whitaker lifted his knee and clunked the aggressor on the hip to give her attention. He told her to stop. Immediately after the incident, the girl's teacher questioned the girls about what had occurred. Not once, not twice, but three times, the girls told them, Mr. Whitaker hit me with the knee on the hip. He asked the girls if they'd like to go to the office and make that report. At the time, they said no. They waited a few minutes. By the time the girls had decided to go to the office, they had changed their story from a bump on the hip to the story that accused him of grabbing her buttocks. In today's world, being a male PE teacher is more difficult than it was a few years ago. Things that all of us do, like pulling a student aside to perform a jumping jack, a push-up, or a sit-up, can be now interpreted as a sexual, a sexual misconduct. In reality, a teacher does this to either to protect a student who's embarrassed to perform the task in front of their peers, or to hold that student accountable for not doing the task when their, when their classmates did it. Just the nature of playing games with students puts teachers at risk for student complaints. As professionals, um, we will ask the board that it's your job to protect us from these false accusations. We believe a handful of people who have personal vendettas against Jim Whitaker are leading a smear campaign to get him fired. They use social media and the press to destroy his character. They claim they're protecting children. Filing a half million dollar lawsuit does not protect children. Hopefully the community will let our school board and the district office do what is right. We protect children every day. Jim Whitaker has been a very good teacher and has done many good things for our community and our school. In all of the years that we have worked with him, none of us have ever viewed, heard about, or suspected anything sexually from him. None of us have ever had any of you girls come to us and say something that would raise a red flag. We're all there available, and we have not had anybody um, point out to me that Jim has done anything sexually inappropriate. We would, we would wish that the board would consider that. Thank you for listening. Uh, no, 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 let them finish, please. Israeli members of the board, thank you for the opportunity to speak. I can't begin to imagine the strength and courage it takes for a young girl to not only tell someone about sexual misconduct by a teacher, but to report it to another teacher, administrators, and the police officer who have worked alongside this teacher for years. Since doing so, she and her family have been forced to withstand public humiliation by comments made by this man and his attorney and by members of our, of our very own community discounting their report, calling them liars, and accusing them of wanting some big bucks. And yet the claim still stands with even more victims courageously coming forward and taking action. <clears throat> Pardon me. The person who has been reported for misconduct with more than just this one girl is a teacher, someone entrusted by the school district to be a safe person whose interest should lie in the advancement of his students' education and character, as well as helping to provide a safe school climate. Someone whose interest additionally lies in worthy causes within our community in which he has an influential voice. A person no one would ever believe would do this to a child. But here we are with this brave girl and her family along with numerous other victims who are still waiting to speak up and file reports despite the obvious hurdles that lie in front of them. What gets me is the fact that this could have been stopped 20 years ago after the reported case you're familiar with from 1998. Based on a phone interview from the Appeal Democrat, this teacher believes present society is hypersensitive. According to his attorney, the allegation stemming from 1998 was nowhere near anything that could be described as sexual assault. They, did the Yuba City Unified School District and its Board of Trustees believe the same? Because I can't for the life of me understand why this teacher has been allowed to return to his duties after exerting repeated and reported behavior of the same nature. Did this not register on anyone's radar as concerning until now? Regardless of whether or not all claims of his conduct have been of sexual nature, how does the school district really feel about 
quote unquote force play that involved holding the minor female in place by force, causing an injury that required surgery, or tightly gripping hands around a minor female's neck, or forcibly <coughs> attempting to prevent a student from reporting misconduct, or videotaping a minor female student during PE class without her permission, or intimidating students who were witness to misconduct, or following a female, minor female into the girl's locker room, or entering a girl's bathroom and refusing to leave when asked, or grabbing a rear end, or pinching a butt cheek, or drubbing genitalia against a minor female's backside, or whispering an inappropriate message into a minor female's ear, or grubbing a breast. While some of these actions can easily be, de be defined as sexual harassment or battery, how is this nowhere near anything could be, that can be described as sexual assault? Both are listed next to each other in the offenses and consequences section of the student handbook as acts that would require a minimum of expulsion for a first offense. I'm appalled to learn this teacher had not been held to the same standards as his students. I want to thank you for your recommendation for termination of this teacher. Finally, Sadly, however, the district's failure to act appropriately. Thank you. Um, we are going to end public comment at this time. There's probably four or five more people. We're not going to take those comments at this time. Um, we will be adjourning to closed session. When we come back, um, yeah. When we come back in at 7 o'clock, those people who were not heard pro previously can address the board at that time. I've asked because there is some misunderstanding uh, about what the process is. I've asked our legal advisor to explain to you the process from this point on. After she finishes, we will adjourn to closed session. I would ask that you not approach any board members um, uh, to talk to them. We're going to go right into closed session, so please do not approach board members. Kim? Thank you. Um, first, I'd like to comment that I, I noticed a number of people um, talked about complaints or allegations that the district may or may not have on file, and it's imperative that anyone who believes that they have information about um, employee misconduct uh, for a, a district employee to come forward and uh, make that information known and they can contact the superintendent's office to do that. Uh, while I can't talk about any specific disciplinary case, I know that there are often questions about the, uh, the disciplinary process for certificated employee. And generally speaking, in the state of California, it starts by filing a, a statement of, of written charges with the board. Boards do not um, hold hearings. They do not uh, listen to uh, witnesses. And it is not an evidentiary hearing. Uh, what the statute asks, what this state legislature has asked, is that school boards determine whether the allegations are enough to initiate the disciplinary process, which then starts the due process for the, for the employee. Um, if they pass or approve written charges, that employee has the right to request a hearing. If the hearing is not conducted before the Board of, of, of Education, it actually goes out in front of a state uh, panel. The Office of Administrative Hearings uh, gives an, an administrative law judge and two other panel members, they're, they're impartial, and they hold the entire hearing, and their decision is binding. So just to set the record straight as to what the process looks like, um, I wanted to fill you in on those, those details about the general process. So that is the process. We wanted you to understand that um, because I think some, some individuals were confused as to what happens from this point on. So hopefully you're clear on that. Again, we have five speakers up here who did not get to speak. They can address the board at 7 o'clock. Um, we will take no further comments on this item um, other than the ones we already have. That being said, we are adjourning to closed session. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we um, have concluded closed session, and I'm going to ask legal counsel to report out. I ask that whatever she reports out, um, and someone say you shouldn't have to be reminded, well, I am going to remind you.
that this is a meeting of the board being held in public. I ask that you respect it as such. Um, after the, whatever she reports out, legal counsel will report out. Um, <clears throat> we will then, at that point, um, allow those people who did not get to speak, if they choose to speak at that time. Um, you know, there were five people, I believe Sean and I had five people that did not have the opportunity to speak. That being said, um, our legal counsel will read out the report from closed session. Uh, tonight the, the board met in closed session um, to receive the filing of verified written charges against a certificated employee of the district. Uh, the board has determined that the filed charges allege facts sufficient to initiate the termination process. The employee may request a hearing. Uh, a full evidentiary hearing is required by law within 30 calendar days. Um, <clears throat> do you want to reiterate very quickly what the process is at this point, please? Sure, just a reminder that uh, while not specific to any particular uh, disciplinary action, the state of California through uh, the education code requires that uh, employees, uh, when a board approves a, a written statement of charges, the next step is that the employee can request a full evidentiary hearing. And that thing goes out to the state of California uh, to be assigned to an office of administrative hearings law judge and a three person panel that will ultimately make a binding decision about uh, the, the veracity of the charges. Okay, that is the report out of, close, out of closed session. There will be no further comments on that item or any other items on closed session. We will now proceed with open session. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's it. Veronica Avila, Avila? Yes. I'm sorry. Okay, you said it. We still want her here into the three minute time limit. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Members of the board, thank you for the opportunity to speak. I would like to start by reading directly from the YCUSD student handbook. The governing board recognizes the harmful effects of bullying on students' learning and school attendance and desires to provide safe school environments that protect students from physical and emotional harm. District employees shall establish student safety as a high priority and shall not tolerate bullying of any student. No individual or group shall through written, physical, <coughs> verbal, or other means harass, sexually harass, threaten, intimidate, retaliate, cyber bully, cause bodily injury to, or commit hate violence against any student or school personnel. Employees should be held to the same standards. For the sake of all the victims of the actions by the teacher currently on leave for misconduct, as well as a potential future victims, please do the right thing and accept the board's recommendation to terminate this teacher's employment. The following statement is from a former student at Yuba City High School. I was valedictorian of the 2016 graduating class at Yuba City High School. In 2012, during my freshman year at YCHS, a student who is currently on administrative leave was my PE teacher. One day during volleyball, he split us into groups and decided to participate in my group. When I missed the ball, he turned around and yelled at me for doing so. Even though, I was in, even though he was in front of me and was not watching my actions. When I accidentally missed the ball again, he stopped the game and approached me really close to scream in my face in front of everyone. As I am not athletically inclined, my missed attempts at hitting the ball were not intentional. And I was extremely embarrassed and humiliated that he screamed at me for being bad at volleyball. I left the class in tears and told my parents about the incident. When my parents reported the incident, the PE teacher continued to verbally harass me in class and call me aside almost every day for a week to talk about the incident with me. He claimed he was just joking and I needed to participate or I wouldn't get credit. He would also continue to pick on me to the point that one day during lineup, the boy in front of me asked him, why are you always so mean to her? 
My friends in the class also noticed my distress and anxiety and always made sure to stick with me so there would be a witness in case he ever screamed at me again. My freshman year was the most stressful and anxiety filled of my high school career because of this teacher. Even to this day, when I see him, I try to avoid him to protect myself from his temper and his inappropriate behavior. Thank you very much for your time. If I call your name and you choose not to speak, that's fine too. I'm just going to go through those that were in front of me before we adjourn to closed session. There's one here that was not, that will not be heard. Mary DeWitt. Mary, thank you. I'm speaking on behalf of my daughter who couldn't be here. She lives in Utah and would love to have been here to participate. And this is a statement from her. About 20 years ago, as a high school student, I was walking past Mr. Redeker outside of the gymnasium at Yuba City High. As Mr. Whitaker passed me, he grabbed my bottom. I remember being completely shocked. I didn't really know what to do at the time. I confided in a good friend about the incident, who sometime later became another one of of victims of Mr. Whitaker's. We both then gave statements to the school. There were no repercussions for his actions, no punishment for blatantly using his power to do inappropriate things to young girls. The district and other authorities chose to believe him over the victims. I often think about all of these young girls and what they've gone through unnecessarily. Appropriate actions should have been taken 20 years ago. I hope that proper actions will take place now and that the victims throughout all of these years will finally be made right. He deserves no mercy for the way that he's disrespected women in general over the years and even at Harvard. And as a mother and as a parent, many of you are parents here. These are children we're talking about, minor children. They may look like adults because they're teenagers, but they're children. And there is no possible way that all of these people, it could be some big brown kiss conspiracy, that for, that for over 20 years, all of these people have gotten together and this is a conspiracy against Jim Whitaker. No, these are true stories. And people, he, he's been in a position of power over these children, their children. And he has been sexually inappropriate and he has touched sexually inappropriately. And he's been allowed to go on and on. And I read in the newspaper that he has denied this. And for him to deny this many, this, you just don't make this up. You just don't make it up. And for all of you that are sitting here and you're vouching for his character, you're complicit and you should be ashamed. Steve Meyer. Steve Meyer. He didn't make it back into the speakers. <laughs> already kept him out. He's right here. Oh. <laughs> okay, people, I'm going to ask you again. We want to hear the speakers. We want to respect their right to speak. Shouting out does not help us to accomplish that. Please refrain from doing that. Mr. Go ahead, please. Thank you very much. My name is Steve Meyer. I'm a citizen of uh, Yuba City. I would like to thank the board, uh, school board for the opportunity to give this brief look at safe sport. You, the U.S. Center for Safe Sport headquarters in Denver, Colorado, works collaboratively with sports organizations to foster a culture of safety by raising awareness 
collaborative um, best practices and providing education and training to promote respect and prevent abuse. The center encourages and it encounters two offices. One of these offices is for education and outreach and the other is for responsive and resolutions and you can learn more about safe sport at safe www.safesport.org i am a certified coach with usa archery this is a requirement for us to pass if we do not pass this there's three levels of this that we have to do safe sport currently updated their policy requirement and we are now required to pass this course every two years if we do not pass we don't get certified to teach i would like to take this time to the school board to implement new policy to train your teachers and all students the proper way to handle these abuses and harassments and personally I've seen this in our family it destroys lives for years I'm not talking five ten I'm talking 50 60 years and something has to be done somewhere I would like to thank you thank you Ms. Albrecht? Um, that wasn't a request to speak, it was a note to someone. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Nancy. Go <laughs> to the guards. Oh, okay. Vera, <laughs> <laughs> Korea. Vera, Korea. Vera, Korea. Okay. That concludes the comments from the public on this matter. I want to assure you that this board has heard your voices. Um, there have been accusations against the board that things were done and we didn't take action. I can assure you that there are at least three of us that have been on this board 15 plus years. We have never had a concern like this about the individual in question brought before this board. I won't explain what happened in the past or didn't happen in the class, in the past. I won't, I won't comment on that. All I can say is that we will be, move forward from this point on. Thank you for your participation and those of you who wish to leave, feel free to do so. Thank you.